obviously discussed in detail what is significant Australian content and what is quite and what is not. I just thought I'd just outline um, some five key points that I've come across when dealing with the location <coughs> offset and what from what the policy intent etc is of the producer offset. Just some key some key points which um, can provoke discussion that may come up throughout the case study. Um, first one seems pretty simple. The applicant must be the producer, and this is the producer offset. And the applicant is, a, as Bryce alluded to before, it's a proprietary limited company. It's the company that does all the things necessary to make the film. It's not some shell entity that just creates through a series of book transactions and claims an offset, even though someone else has been making the film. So this is again substance over form. Who is the producer? What did they? What did that applicant entity do in relation to the film and TV show? Number two, as David opened up with, this starts off this producer offset as the producer's equity. It may get, as we're going to go through the case study, some of it traded away in order to get the, the, the project off the ground. But you can't underestimate what the potential value is of the offset to the project. So it's not just about what's quake and what's not. It's about what could this offset be worth to my whole financing plan and what is the best way to get my project together and still hold on to the most of it. Because it's, it's the producer offset that's there to empower the producer. Don't automatically think you have to give it all away because someone says that's the only way it's done. There's going to be obviously varying degrees of deals done as, as this incentive becomes um, more known, but um, just be careful to try and hold on to it. As English producers are trying to do uh, you know, in, in their system and what Canadian producers have been doing for years. Um, the third point is, as, as, as we've talked about, it is a tax offset. So there are, you know, the applicant's tax liabilities, where the, as to what you believe they are and to what the ATO believe they are, will come into effect and could reduce the value of your offset. Some of the risks are you need to understand, and you're going to see some weird one great diagrams and flowcharts throughout the case study, but you just need to know if you as the producer and the applicant, what is it, what is has been what rights have you held in, in relation to the deal and how has the rest of the financing plan come together? Because all of these topic the these subjects that we're going to be discussing about pre-sales, state government rebates. Gap loans, super gap loans, <coughs> sale of copyright, they all have different tax treatment, they all have different timing treatment, they all need to be reported properly on your books as far as when you're lodging a tax return. You know, it may not be that your tax return looks like zero income, zero revenue and a $3 million tax offset. The ATO, that may delay things. The ATO is going to look at the deal and go, well, this is not quite what we think the tax return may look like. And this could just relate to delays. Or even before it even gets to the ATO, as far as um, understanding you know, what, what the FFC are going to go through as far as how, how the deal looks. Um, and that, you know, has, that has an impact for both the producers and if there are outside investors, just making sure you, the deal is understood and who's reporting what revenue, etc. on the respective sides of the transaction. Then uh, number four, there are the indirect tax risks that happen along the way during the production that I guess people take, take again and just will just sort themselves out, but will now can cause delays for you. Goods and services tax, PAYG, payroll tax, all these kind of things, just to ensure that, that there's just nothing going to pop out as an issue so that it's just going to delay your claim. Uh, the final one, as I've touched on before, non-arms length transactions. I mean, this, this is an area the ATO will obviously look at as well. It, you know, you can't just inflate deals either between yourselves, between third party providers, um, just to inflate the value of the quake. This, this kind of thing will if it comes to the surface, will result not only in delays in your claims, but probably strike down the intent of the whole incentive. And it may, you may need to go to the, the point, and this is really a, maybe a legal thing, but you may need to, when you're contracting with third party providers, the part of your contract is saying that there's no part of the quote, etc. has been inflated by related parties, you're going to do all the work on shore, if that's part of the arrangement, just so you can do as much as you can to protect yourselves as the producers, so that just things don't pop up just at the last minute when you are really waiting on that cash to come through to pay off the loan, or investors, whatever it is that you've done in the deal. So, as I said, non arms like transactions has been a big thing within the location offset that has come and has been really treated very well by the industry as far as, um, you know, it hasn't become an issue because everyone has taken that kind of uh, part of the deal very seriously. Um, the next slide, I just wanted to go through. These finance plans that are going to be 